Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the March 9th, 2021 work session of the Forsyth County Board of Education. If you all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm just saying what a lovely day it is out there, but we will work through our agenda today. Any necessary changes? No recommended changes. Right. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. Motion by Tom. Second Aye. by Tom, by Wes. All in favor? That's unanimous. First up under presentation and discussion is the fiscal 2020 audit report with Marlena Jenkins and Adam Fraley. Virtual. Oh, they're virtual. Okay. okay, Adam, you can uh, unmute your mic. Okay. All right, you're ready to uh, present. Okay, good deal. Has, has Larry already been up? Yes, sir. Larry's Larry's ready. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm here to present the audit um, for the Forsyth County Schools for the year into June 30, 2020. Um, you should see on the uh, screen there that I'm sharing um, our auditor's discussion and analysis. Um, that is the document where uh, I've summarized the results of the audit, a uh, little bit of the financial uh, results as well, and then some of our required communications that I'll kind of go over with you in summary. Uh, I'll try to refer to each page number um, that I'm on as I go through just to kind of help you follow along and uh, certainly uh, let me know if you have any questions. So I'm turning to page two here and uh, you know this is uh, just updated information about our firm, uh, about our firm's governmental practice sector uh, in that we serve over 500 governments annually and you can see there on the map that we, we serve governments throughout the state southeast uh, predominantly in Georgia where we have most of our offices though and then of course Forsyth uh, County Board of Education's audit is conducted out of our Atlanta office. Um, uh, I am Adam Fraley. I was an engagement lead partner on the audit. Uh, I also had a gentleman Christopher McKellar who was engagement director and Will Durzis who was our engagement manager in, in the uh, conduct of the audit. Uh, the next page three here, this is some of the other industries that we serve as a firm uh, and some of the other services that we provide. And then on page four, um, the, the Board of Education each year is required to put together an annual financial report uh, and have that report audited uh, by an outside independent accounting firm. Uh, we did conduct our audit. Um, the, the Board of Education put together the financial report for our auditing needs, and uh, we issued what we call an, an unmodified audit report, uh, in layman's terms, meaning a clean opinion. Uh, what that means is that the financial statements, they're considered to be presented fairly in all material respects for the financial position and the results of operations as of for the year into June 30, 2020. <laughs> On the next page five here, just hitting some of the financial highlights for the year ended, um, the Board of Education ended with total assets, um, including deferred outflows resources, which is a little bit of an accounting technical term, of about $1.6 billion, offset by liabilities of about $1.56 or about $1.57 billion. Um, this results in a net position or equity of the Board of Education of about $63 million at June 30, 2020. Uh, of course, that net position um, is made up of capital and non-capital type assets offset by its, li offset by its liabilities. Um, the net investment in capital assets uh, was about $506 million. There was another four, uh, I'm sorry, there was another $109 million that was restricted net position, leaving about $552 million that is net position that is unrestricted. Um, and considered available for future operations. Uh, the Board of Education, uh, its change in net position, you'll see at the very bottom of the page there, 
uh, was about $10.5 million added to that position for the year ending. On the next page, we talk a little bit about the general fund uh, being the main operating fund of the Board of Education. I apologize. And um, the general fund uh, revenues for the year were about $493 million, uh, compared to about $448 million in the prior year, uh, which is an increase of about $23 million. The next page shows a chart on general fund expenditures. Uh, total expenditures were about $482 million, uh, excluding transfers in. Um, and expenditures in the prior year were about $448 million. So you can see a comparison there. And then, of course, in the graph below there, you can see the expenditures by the different functions, um, excluding instruction being the largest functional area. Uh, the next couple pages is a Cliff Notes version to the financial statement footnotes. So as you're looking at the... Uh, at the Board of Education's financial statements, you can refer back here as to each one of the footnotes is telling um, you the readers. And that goes to the next couple pages. And then starting on page 10, this is our required communications. And I'm not going to go into detail on these, but I want to hit just a couple highlights. Um, as you turn to page 12, um, we're required to disclose if there's any difficulties in the audit or if there's any disagreements with management. Um, I'm happy to report that we didn't have any such difficulties or disagreements regarding you know, any application of significant accounting principles or anything like that. Uh, management was very forthcoming in all the audit information that we needed uh, to conduct the audit, both you know, do it effectively and, and efficiently. So uh, we certainly appreciate that. Um, we, as you see at the bottom there, we did have a few audit adjustments. Those are included in this package at the end of it. Um, they've all been discussed with management and posted to the financial statements as well as to the general ledger of the Board of Education. Uh, again, just to ensure the financial statements are fairly presented. Uh, on the next page, it is important to note that we are independent, um, both in fact and appearance. Um, that independence is very important um, to the conduct of the audit and our role as we, as we you know, play as auditors for the Board of Education. Uh, at the bottom of the page there is a couple um, items we, we call management points, and what they are is just kind of a byproduct of management recommendations. Um, management recommendations from the audit, um, both of those have been gone over with management and, uh, and as far as you know, the corrective actions that need to take place for that. And then at the bottom of page 14, you also have the purchase card liability accrual. Um, we did have two findings you'll see there. They're both of an accounting nature uh, that, um, again, those were discussed with management. The, the adjustments were made for the financial things to be corrected, um, and management has provided corrective actions on those as well. And then the rest of the document is new accounting standards that are coming down the pipeline. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail on each one of these. I think the important thing to note here is that almost all of these were delayed for by either 12 months or, or 18 months, uh, depending on the standard uh, due to COVID-19. Uh, so we got a little bit of a breather on that, uh, but these nonetheless are accounting standards coming down the pipeline that we, we certainly want to keep uh, the finance office, the board, everyone abreast of kind of what's coming down uh, the pipe there as I, as I kind of scroll through these and, and these, you know, certainly uh, there, there, there are many. Uh, GASB, the uh, standard setting body, uh, keeps us quite busy with these. Um, and that concludes uh, my presentation. Um, but if you've got any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. I had a question. Hi, this is Lindsay. Um, oh, sorry. April. Um, regarding the information technology framework, page 13. I'm sorry, page 13. Um, yes. Yeah, it says, you know, implemented many cybersecurity measures and processes because earlier this year we were. Um, presented with what has been going on in that arena, and it seemed like it was pretty robust what we were doing. Um, so it says, 
they do not prescribe to a formal cybersecurity framework. I, I, I guess I don't understand what that means. Well, there, there's what it is. There's a lot that is involved in a comprehensive information technology framework. Uh, it goes all the way from things that you're doing internally and, and internal controls and everything related to cybersecurity, et cetera, all the way to a monitoring process, um, including outside entity performing, you know, kind of a, a regular monitoring of it all. And um, it, it obviously, as, as you know, it, it is, it's probably our, the, the, one of the biggest rising threats, uh, not just to governments, but especially governments, uh, but of all entities. And, uh, you know, something we, we certainly want to stay ahead of, and especially, you know, we've, we've seen a lot of headlines with um, a lot of um, governments, especially, that have been attacked um, from a cybersecurity standpoint. And, um, and so, you know, we, you're kind of not in the minority there that, uh, you know, just about all governments don't have that whole comprehensive framework, including the monitoring um, you know, I, I, I kind of put it in audit terms a little bit that, you know, for example, the finance office is very involved in, in, in doing a good job and working very hard at um, handling and accounting for the finance of the Board of Education. But yet there's still an audit by an independent party like ourselves. Um, and, and so that's where the kind of I see it headed, if you will, uh, also in the IT environment. Um, of having that outside uh, monitoring component as well. Is that not a service your company recently was certified in and offering? I'm sorry? Is, uh, is that not a service your company has recently been certified and being able to offer? Um, yes, it has. In fact, there's many certifications. Um, we actually this is just um, for financial. got another for certification just framework. recently. Um, the high trust certification, but the, yes, there's a there's a separate group within our firm that specializes in doing um, those services. I think one of the things to know is that this is for information technology framework when it comes to the finance and the financial transaction. What we had presented was the overall cybersecurity for students, for teachers, for the school system. Which we got glowing reviews on. They were really impressed right. with us, especially. Uh, yeah, so that's right. Yeah, separate. Uh, Thank right. you. Thank you for that explanation. Mm -hmm. I know. And then and thank you for uh, Larry, for uh, uh, Mr. Hamlow. We obviously said they worked very well with them and cooperated with them and the suggestions and comments they had and for any necessary changes were well received and will be taken into accommodations. Larry? Yes. Thank you. Oh, I just want to add on, um, Adam, when you talk about the information technology framework, it's just like Wes said, it's purely from the financial side point, correct? Well, you know, really, I would have to look back, back into our work papers on that as far as the specific, you guys, honestly, I can't remember there, but, I, you know, it, Oftentimes we see it outside of the finance, even, you know, at a, at a lot of governments. That's the way it is at most governments. Um, but you may need to help me a little bit uh, from the standpoint of, of uh, within the finance office. No, I, I think I'll tell you what, if you can just communicate to me your backup, I can just forward it to the board so yeah. they have more information. How about that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Well, stop. All right. Thank Adam, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Anything else in here? I just wanted to add to that. Um, I was just got done with a two-hour meeting today with uh, IT technology, and we started a cybersecurity committee. Huh. And one of the things they've done is they've hired a company called Lockstep to actually go in and test our system and stuff. And I can tell you they got a pretty good feedback from Lockstep. There are some things they can do. Mike Evans can give you more information to that. But it sounds like we're on a good step. Yeah, he actually presented to the board at our retreat in January. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so we're good. Yeah. yeah but that were. was a good meeting we had. Um, the other thing is, one of the things we're relying upon with the information technology side is when we went to the web with Munis, they took over a lot of the cybersecurity on their end. And just FYI, 
Munich did have a leak or a break into their system last fall. And I don't know exactly what's, uh, how much it was or what it was involved, but I can get the information for you and present it as well. Well, we were pretty impressed with the presentation we received in January. And they said that they were, as a school system as a whole, com compared to others, that, that we were doing extremely well. I right. forget there was a rating mm -hmm. system that yeah. they had for us, and we received like the highest level. So right. we were very pleased. Okay. Yeah, it was they had, you know, they always said that it's always things they were going to help us continue to do, but they were going to continue to test internally. But they were really pleased with where we were at. Well, so. one of the what I would call minor changes we've made, and a lot of our employees have already done this, is we've gone to a 16-digit password uh, because one of the things we learned from those audits is when, when hackers are trying to get into your system, if your passwords are hard to get into, they pass you over and go somewhere else. They're not going to waste a lot of time. So most of our employees have already done that. They, they've transitioned to a 16-digit password. Yep. Thanks, Larry. Appreciate it. Any other questions? All right. Next up, we have Career, Technical, and Agricultural Education, CTA Update with Dr. Valerie Lowe. Quite the booklet. Yes. Wow, that's gotten thicker. Has that gotten thicker? <laughs> awesome. our, our programs have grown. <laughs> you, <laughs> Valerie does have a lot of, it's a draft. A lot of um, materials. Lars laying down his hand. It's a draft. All right. Now with East, I came with East. Well, good afternoon. Um, we are pleased from our uh, office to provide you a little bit of an update around career and technical education. And we'll just kind of speed through basically just some impacts um, that we have experienced just like everybody else over the course of the past year uh, and just some overall general information about kind of where we're at and where we're headed next. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to show you a short clip that we put together really during COVID, so this is all, all of our pre-COVID footage, um, just kind of a general overview that we use a lot in the community right now uh, as we're presenting. Preparing students for success is the sole focus of career, technical, and agricultural education at Forsyth County Schools. Our CTAE program is dedicated to teaching our students the skills they need to meet world-class standards and enter the marketplace as productive citizens. Forsyth County Schools offers some of the most respected CTAE career pathways in the state and is home to some of the largest career tech student organizations in the country. Students can take sequence classes in their area of interest from 17 different career clusters. They discover their interests, earn industry credentials, and gain real-world experience all before graduating from high school. Juniors and seniors can participate in Internship Forsyth which connects classroom learning to an engaging job opportunity. Students gain access to some of the best jobs in the community and work experience directly related to their chosen career pathway. Many employers actively seek high school students who are enrolled in Internship for Sight. Mentorship for Sight provides motivated students a job shadowing experience in a specific area of interest. Students explore their passion for a profession under the guidance of a trusted mentor in local businesses and organizations. Students in both programs develop occupational skills, gain valuable industry contacts, and stand out in a competitive market while earning course credit for their time. To support this work, Forsyth County Schools continues to build a strong base of business, industry, and community to ensure career development opportunities for our students. Our career development partners are an integral part of propelling students beyond the classroom and into the community. Community partnerships help students learn workplace behavior and develop specific skills within an industry. Partners work with us in multiple ways like hosting interns, mock interviews, and our college and career fairs. Whether students plan to enter the workforce immediately or attend college, these partnerships ensure that they are prepped for success upon graduation. Our CTAE programs ensure an ongoing partnership between education, business, and industry. By bridging the classroom with the workforce, Forsyth County Schools continues to empower our students with the educational pathways that will lead to success in high school, college, and career. All right, let me get back to where I was at. Okay. So this is uh, obviously a work in progress this time of year as we're continuing to think about next year uh, and maybe make some changes here and there per school. And so it's always 
a little bit of a work in progress as we work with our schedulers and individual school administrators on their plans for next year. Um, but I did include, um, this is the latest one as of today for our high school programs. As you all know, East Forsyth is a big part of our daily work right now, along with Hendricks Middle School. So our middle school programs, and you all have followed us from, for a while now, have grown significantly um, thanks to supportive principals helping us kind of build a little bit more feeder patterns for our high school programs. And so again, this is kind of an ebb and flow, um, but this is where we're at right now. Just to show you a little bit about our growth over the years, um, just as our student population has grown, our programs are also growing, of course. And so you can kind of see where we've been over the past four or five years uh, in terms of uh, doubling the number of pathways that we're now offering our students, as well as uh, just the increase in participation with dual enrollment. As you all know, if you followed uh, a lot of the state regulations and legislation, uh, dual enrollment has exploded over the past several years. Uh, our CTSOs, uh, again, support directly back to a career pathway, and so our students spend time, a lot of time inside of class and outside of the classroom with CTSO components and, and competitive events. And uh, usually this time of year, we're very busy and we're very tired because we're, we're going from, uh, you know, Athens to Atlanta to different places competing. Obviously, we're virtual now, uh, so we've got a lot of disappointed students who are not going to be traveling uh, in the spring and summer for those events. Um, I just put this slide together because really this kind of portrays kind of where we're at this school year. Um, this shows you, you know, a principal meeting with their teacher in their greenhouse. It shows you our CTSOs and these students are at school on a Saturday morning competing. Uh, it shows uh, Forsyth Central's pathway night uh, virtual. Uh, it shows a little bit of our uh, leadership opportunities that we've had uh, in person, that we've tried to guarantee uh, students a rewarding experience for those fall leadership conferences that they may have missed. It shows partnership donations uh, at the school level that are still continuing. It shows uh, trade talks that we've been filming as a part of trying to get our word out a little bit differently rather than student tours. Uh, it shows a staff uh, of teachers dress for success on a dress for success day, and that looks different. Uh, and then uh, the final one shows um, a little bit about, uh, you know, the Innovate UNG program that we just concluded. Again, we did that virtually as well as um, just some interaction uh, with our criminal justice and law students with some judges across the state. So that's just kind of where we're at uh, as a district and, and as a department with CTAE. Um, we're fortunate that uh, a lot of school districts around us really kind of um, was not as forthcoming in terms of talking about safety and talking about how we can continue these programs safely. So we worked a lot uh, over the summer to put some strong practices and, and, and uh, procedures in place for our teachers to consider making sure because so many of our programs are hands-on. Uh, we're working around each other. We're working sometimes on each other with different practices and procedures. So um, we uh, are working closely with our teachers on questions around that. We've also moved, uh, as, as a lot of folks have done, everything they can to a more digital format, right? So video content and uh, anything electronic that we can get out because we're not having that interaction maybe with our middle school students and our high school labs and that kind of thing. And then we have done a lot of filming around trade talks, so getting industry in. Uh, filming them because we haven't been doing as many uh, in-person events, of course. Uh, our industry certification processes continue. This is similar to a district accreditation review. We have these every five years with our programs. So these are the programs that are going through this current school year. Uh, all of those normal in-person visits will be virtual, uh, but we've got a lot of teachers working really hard, long hours on getting their information together for these industry certification visits. Um, the picture on the right hand side just shows one of our teachers with um, her externship. Those are continuing for our teachers to have that experience uh, in industry and she actually helped out at one of our um, COVID clinic days. So that was one of our healthcare science teachers. Uh, mock interviews, a lot of you have participated with us in mock interviews. Typically this time of year we're managing up to 500 volunteers uh, with 4,000 students running them through these scenarios. We partnered with UNG really in the spring when we thought things might uh, get to where we're at right now uh, and developed a program called Career Launch. And we uh, were glad to work with them, one of their professors there. We worked daily with him to develop this out and basically build out uh, kind of some pre-work for our students and teachers to do in the classroom. And then there's one virtual seminar uh, that our schools will be doing. So 
uh, we didn't feel comfortable creating a virtual environment for industry community members to come in uh, to do mock interviews this year. We just didn't feel uh, real safe to do that. And so we are using something called Talk Hiring. Uh, and this is, I guess, uh, an adult program that adults can go and use, but we contract it with Talk Hiring uh, to kind of bring this down to a high school level. Uh, and it allows students to get, uh, I guess, some algorithm feedback immediately from their experiences so they can do this in, in school. Or as you can see on the left-hand side, uh, these are just some snippets that I took from kids that were doing this last week uh, at home. So it allows them to do a phone interview, but it also allows them this experience. So again, not ideal, not the true uh, feedback that we like from our community. But again, this was a great solution. And on the right-hand side, you can kind of see um, just you know things, the immediate feedback that our students can get. We can log in, our teachers can log in, we can listen to their interviews. Uh, and we can also provide them some additional feedback that way. So hopefully we'll be back on track next year, but this was something that we felt like worked this year. Dr. Lowe, can you see, I can see that being a useful tool to be used in conjunction with the we live. Think so. We think a lot of this can pace, be pre-work next yeah, year, and I think yeah. there's a lot of unintended good consequences yeah. from where from what we've done this year, and that was one of them. So that, uh, along with, and flipping to the next one, the same kind of conversations we've had, um, we weren't able to do our normal eighth grade college and career fair, and that's where we spend two days at the First Life Conference Center uh, with about 4,000 so of our eighth graders. Uh, it's wild and crazy, and definitely no way to social no rain, distance no that event. Um, so it's normally set up like a trade show, so um, Cindy, was using V fairs for the job fair, and so we were able to kind of partner together to purchase that. Uh, and so we use this for our eighth graders this year. So this is kind of what ours look like if you're familiar with what the job fair looked like. So we were able to, to work over several months to pull this together. So we were able to do a lot of things. Uh, we build out each booth the same. And so if I'm, a, if I'm a looking at Alliance or if I'm looking at Denmark or Central, I would go in and find the same CTA information. So we're comparing kind of apples to apples. And then we ask our teachers to submit, you know, lab tour video, um, we had some keynote stuff. Um, Dr. Bearden did a welcome for our students to see. So it, it turned out really, really well. So what we did, and I stuck a little book inside of your big book uh, that showed kind of what our students got. Uh, and so they spent the day with their eighth grade teachers uh, and everybody did it a little bit different through uh, maybe a connection time or maybe through a focus time during the school day on November the 20th. And so we were live uh, our Office of Coordinators, we were live with the students chatting and answering questions, which kind of got rogue some with our eighth grade questions, you know, you never know. <laughs> but we chatted back and forth just answering questions, or what if I want to do this, or can I, can I play sports here, or, you know, what does this pathway mean? So we, we kept up with that uh, interaction, and then students had some activities that they did before the day of. So again, um, not uh, ideal, but I think it will be a good precursor to our hopefully get back to an in-person event. So they've had that before they got there. So hopefully that will um, be a better use of their time. Other projects that we have been working on, um, we developed community hero and career trees for all the different cluster areas that we have. So these are just some examples. Uh, we built out some lessons and activities. This is something that can be brought down to earlier, younger grade levels. Um, and this is just a picture. Uh, we use Carolyn Booker, Dr. Booker at Northside. Uh, and this was another picture of her um, uh, HOSA chapter delivering some things for them at the beginning of this school year. So just highlighting people that are active in our programs. Um, our internship and mentorship programs, we were very worried about those over the summer, as you can imagine, especially with some of our health care and our clinical sites. But we have uh, currently about over 600 students in the program, active in the program, uh, that have uh, we found placements for, for them all with our six coordinators. And these are just a couple of pictures of them working in the courthouse. Uh, this is a student at Versailles Central who does uh, courthouse interpretation. Uh, Carol Daniel Construction, one of our students from North, actually works in the building uh, beside us at this construction site, which cool. is really cool to go visit. And we've taken a lot of footage with, with him. And it's just really, he's got a really true story, testimony about how that's impacted him long term. Uh, and then again, we've got kids in vet offices and medical practices. We didn't do our normal internships with Northside Hospital this year for obvious reasons. Uh, and we did not do uh, our internships with um, the Sheriff's Department like we normally do just because of the access uh, with COVID. 
other things that uh, we uh, started this year uh, with West Forsyth, we started the Junior Achievement 3DE Leadership Academy with their cohort, first, first cohort of students. Um, that's gone really well. We hope to grow that year by year. But again, uh, normally we would be sending students uh, into Home Depot or into Jackson Healthcare to make these uh, pitch presentations at the end of these sure. um, case studies that they do. And so they're coming in, and that's a screenshot of them coming in uh, remotely uh, on one of those um, days. And then the Discovery Center. You know we run that just about every day, and so we delayed our students starting until the second semester. Uh, so they have begun that process. Now we, you know, as we open and close middle schools because of obvious reasons with COVID, uh, we've had to, you know, kind of pivot on some of those and move them to a virtual environment. So we've got them all scheduled uh, and it's going well. Um, they've got great procedures in place in terms of safety. We work with the schools, transportation and everything involved to get them placed uh, at the site. So we, we've made modifications there in terms of what that day looks like because normally, you know, it's a little bit wild and crazy <laughs> as well. So that's a picture from last year, of course. Our current work, uh, we are uh, just got reauthorized under Perkins 5, which is a little bit of federal funding that we received for CTAE. Um, our goals were really around employability skills, resource guidance for our teachers, retention and recruitment data collection, and then growing those partnerships and some of our internal monitoring processes that we wanted to do. Um, we are about to um, go into our next phase of that next year with Carl Vinson Institute. Uh, we certainly are busy with new facilities and working with facilities on um, our new projects as well as a lot of lab renovations uh, and then we hope once things stabilize that we can continue our Chamber of Commerce uh, partnership with that economic development liaison position that we had hoped to do last year um, the time that we just about got shut down with um, with everything going on in the spring uh, we're also moving all of our partnerships uh, our career development partners under a Salesforce system which we're excited about um, just moving everything and getting it more organized so that we'll have more trackable data in terms of who's in our schools and what all they are doing for us because we know a lot's happening but we don't have a good way to measure that. Uh, this just shows a little bit about what we're doing with Carl Vinson uh, beginning this spring with, with our stakeholder feedback, um, listening sessions with parents, students, community members, and then we'll have our two Perkins meetings in the fall uh, to develop our next strategy for the next two years. Um, this is probably perhaps the thing that we're most proud of, and you saw that come out with the state of Georgia about this time of year every year, but our graduation rates, if a student is um, involved in career and technical education, their likelihood of finishing, uh, and we were able to get that school level, level data um, in place, so we're really, really proud of that, that that continues to grow um, for our kids that are involved in our programs. This is our office, our six coordinators, and our support staff, uh, and who make the magic happen every day, so that's all I got. Awesome. Any questions? You can pack a lot of information in a little bit of time. There. No, yeah, good job. So that is very good. Well, just a one one point I, I want uh, to make is, and, and Valerie showed the slide and talked about it, but the growth we've had in our career tech programs over the past four or five years has been very significant, and and do appreciate, uh, and I know Valerie does too, over the last couple of years. Um, adding some additional staffing where necessary because we have so many students interested in pursuing getting kids out into our community for these internships and mentorships is critically important. Um, Kristen and Wes know with the work with the Chamber, you know, what a vital component we are to the Chamber with our workforce development program. So, you know, we look forward to continued growth. I think we're still the second highest in the state in terms of CTSO numbers. DeKalb still has a few more than we do, but they have twice as many students as we have as well. So the number of our students involved is impressive, but the number of our students involved in leadership positions is incredibly impressive. And so I'm just really proud of, of the growth we've, we've, we've had in career tech and look forward to continued growth and prosperity with East High School and Hendricks Middle School. My son is in the culinary program, and when he first said, I got dinner, we were a little nervous. But <laughs> now we're like, go for it, buddy. And they even teach him how to properly wash dishes. So, I mean, it works out really well. Yeah, he, he enjoys that program. And I think it's a block class that takes two blocks because they have to cook so long. So that's even better. He's like, this is good. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. That video that you started out with, we've used with the chamber when we've done presentations for developers and we're trying to entice them to bring their businesses to Forsyth mm -hmm. County and we're trying to show them that our students are prepared for the jobs and they are so impressed with the level of information that what's, when they look and peek into the classroom to see what we're doing. But that also shows how much the work that you do is 
dependent upon the relationships with the business partners. It's not about them giving us basis, money. It's yeah. more about that relationship and having the students in those businesses and having them in our classrooms. That's what it's really about. Absolutely. Yeah, when I share with somebody about our system and, and school system this year and time and date, you know, it's not the school that we went to. And this is the big part of the reason it's not. It, it doesn't look like school. Nothing you showed us looked like school. And yet it's real learning and it's real life. And they're getting out of the, the class. And I'm, I'm seeing people that are productive when they leave. And again, that's our profile. That's one of the, the key items in that profile is that they're a productive citizen. And this helps them do that. Well, it's such so a good, good point, Tom. I mean, you saw the graduation rate. It's nearly 100. Personnel items A, 1 to 16, B, 1 to 8, C, 1 to 1, C, 1 to 31, and 33 to 40. So moved. Second. Second by Darla. Is there a motion to approve personnel item C, 32? So moved. All in favor? Is there any abstention? Mm -hmm. No abstention. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor.